What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So, I've done a couple of videos lately about the DJI Osmo Action. And one of the things that I've talked about along the way there is the price point difference between this and the GoPro and how I think that means this has got loads of strengths over that GoPro Hero 8 because the price point makes it about 50 pounds difference. Now that got me thinking, when you look at price points for action cameras, you can still get cheaper options, cheaper than the Osmo Action certainly. So I got having a little look on Amazon and I found an action camera called the Dragon touch for only 25 pounds 25 pounds and I thought wow that's a tenth of the price of the Osmo action 10 times the price I wonder how an action camera that cost 25 pounds would stack up against one that cost more than 250 pounds well to find out the answer to that I had to buy one so I got hold of a Dragon Touch action camera. Now look, straight in at the beginning, this isn't a sponsored video, I just looked this up myself, I found it on Amazon, I bought it, I've got no affiliation whatsoever to this company, not spoken to them at all, I just bought their camera on Amazon. So the first thing to say is that this camera boasts some serious specs, right? Just li listen to some of this. So it's saying it's got the 20 megapixel sensor, it shoots 1080p up to 60 frames per second, it shoots 4K, up to 30 frames per second. You can shoot 120 frames per second at 720p. It has electronic image stabilization. And one of the things that I thought was cool and kind of funny when there's been so much talk around the Osmo Action about it is that it has a port where it supports an external microphone. So on paper, this sounds pretty impressive. I am, however, well aware that with some of these cheaper products, it is a very different story once you get it out of the box. So let's just do just that. Let's quickly look at what we have got in the box of this camera. So cool. Okay, so we have the camera itself, which comes in one of those like plasticky waterproof boxes that you guys will be familiar with with some of the older GoPros. We have here, oh, there's a remote control. Yeah, I've got to say that it comes with a remote control. Uh, that's like a strap or something. Then in here, we've got like a box. I'm guessing this is all of our other bits. Oh yeah. Oh wow, okay, okay. Okay, wow, this is cool. So it comes with pretty much every adapter accessory that you could possibly need. It's got clips and attachments and sticky pads and uh, like a wrist strap, a cleaning cloth, spare cleaning pads. Uh, it comes with two batteries, which is pretty cool. Two batteries, that's quite impressive, right? You'd never get two batteries with a, a GoPro or an Osmo unless you buy a pack that specifically has the two. Wow, pretty cool. Okay, so getting it out of the box. Uh, it's a very similar size to the Osmo Action. Very comparable, I would say. The screen on the back is smaller, but funny enough, probably about the same size as that GoPro screen that I complained about in my previous video. You can see on the side of this Dragon Touch, it's got the ports. They're not covered or anything, hence this isn't waterproof. You need the like plasticky case to make it waterproof. Although as always with these cheaper products, I'm a bit nervous about how waterproof that would actually be. But it's got the ports on the side, it's got the charging port, it's got the microphone port, um, and it's got the SD card slot, other little buttons controls around it. So in terms of how it stacks up, right, I thought I would just check a few of the key bits. And for me, that's gonna be image quality, both just kind of sat here like vlogging style, but also a bit of action. We're gonna head out and we're gonna do a bit of action shooting with these cameras. I thought I would test the image stabilization as well. And I thought with that microphone adapter, it would be wrong of me to not test the microphones and see how they both compare using an external mic as well as the internal audio as well. So just quickly, and the physical aspects of them, uh, it is much, much lighter. I'm talking like probably half the weight of the Osmo Action, I would say, with them here in my hand. I've attached the battery in this one, um, but yeah, it is really light. Doesn't surprise me, I guess, because there is probably a lot more going on in here than there is going on in here. So I think what I need to do is try to like connect them up somehow, or maybe I say connect them up. I'll probably just hold them next to each other like that and, and film myself. But let's see how we go. Okay, right, let's do it. Let's start filming with both of these cameras. Okay, so there we go. Filming myself. Filming myself. Here's the picture from the Osmo Action. Here's the picture from the Dragon Touch. And here's both of them side by side. 
Got no external microphone attached right now. I've got the image stabilization turned on in the Dragon Touch and I've got the Rocksteady turned on in the Osmo Action. This is the audio coming from the Osmo Action. There's no external mic, this is just the audio from the Osmo Action. This is the audio coming from the Dragon Touch. No external mic, just the audio straight from the camera. Okay, and now we've switched to 4K. So this is the 4K picture from both the two action cameras. Here's the 4K picture from the Dragon Touch, and here's the 4K picture from the Osmo Action. Both the two cameras next to each other. This is 4K, 30 frames per second. Okay, cool, that is test number one complete. Before I start sharing thoughts or anything like that, let's test them both using the external microphone. So I'm gonna attach the external microphone to the Osmo Action, then we're gonna attach the external microphone to the Dragon Touch, and we're gonna see how the two of them compare. Let's do that right now. Okay, so here we are on the Osmo Action, on the DJI, and we've got the external microphone adapter attached, and then we've plugged the mic into that. Might be a good point to remember we don't need an adapter for the Dragon Touch, because we can just plug the mic straight in. But this is on the Osmo Action with the external microphone. Right, let's switch over to the Dragon Touch. And there you go, we are on the Dragon Touch. So this is the Dragon Touch with the external microphone attached. Now the only thing I'm not sure about with this is plugging that microphone in and out. I didn't seem to get any kind of register on the screen or anything that it was attached, so I don't know if it's working at all. But this is the external microphone attached to the Dragon Touch camera. Okay, that is test number two complete. Now last but certainly not least, we need to go and check the actual action capabilities of these cameras. Especially with the image stabilization, I would be interested to see how they go when we're out there on the bike, bumping along a bit of rough terrain. I'll be interested to see what kind of footage comes out of them. Let's go and have a look. Right, so I think there is only one fair way to test the stability and the action cam ability of these cameras. And that is to strap them onto the front of this bad boy right here and we are going to go do some mountain bike riding. Let's go. Okay, <laughs> so I am sat here uh, editing this video right now and reviewing all the footage back from our cycle. Wasn't too tough, fortunately, but we're back. So, uh, I mean, look, you guys can see, right, the image from the Dragon Touch is not fantastic. And I initially thought that the image stabilization, like, didn't work when I looked at the footage until I saw it with the footage where it was turned off <laughs> and then it was really bad. So um, yeah, look, we seem to be struggling, right? But I still think there are some merits to this camera. Hear me out on this. Now, by that I mean, when I use my Osmo Action, so much of what I'm doing with it isn't like action related stuff. I'm not out there on, you know, rock climbing and, and abseiling. That, that's not really what I do. So much of my Osmo Action stuff is actually more like vlog style and setting up a stable camera on a little tripod, like filming me with what I'm doing and that kind of stuff. And actually this camera could could do a decent job of that. If you compare the footage when we were just sat in the office here earlier, filming at 1080p, it actually was pretty decent. The audio wasn't so great, but again, so much of what I do, I'm not filming the audio. I use it for like B-roll and filming me in the background and stuff like that. And when you remember that it is 10 times the price, 10 times to get the Osmo Action over that camera for only £25, well actually, 
that's where you start to think, you know what, if somebody wanted a camera, if someone came to me and said, hey Rob, I'm looking for a little action camera that I can just use to film some of my like behind the scenes stuff when I'm doing a bit of work or I'm doing a project, what would be good? You know what, maybe for 25 pounds, you shouldn't overlook that camera. Don't get me wrong. If someone said, hey, I want something to come and film me on my mountain bike rides or my skydive I'm gonna do next month, I would say, well, <laughs> don't get that Dragon Touch. Don't touch <laughs> that Dragon Touch. Get yourself the Osmo Action with the Rocksteady that works. Get yourself a GoPro Hero 8 with that image stabilization because otherwise you're gonna come away with footage that you can't even use and you're gonna be really upset about it. And when it comes to those kind of things, capturing those moments, capturing those memories, any kind of more professional video, well, you know what? That's when it really does come to, you get what you pay for and that's where the more expensive cameras come into their own. So look, you know what? Maybe we've got some viewers that are in that situation that might enjoy using that Dragon Touch camera. So if you would like it, it is yours. We're going to give this away to one of the viewers of the channel. There's a couple of bits you've got to do for me. One, you need to make sure you're subscribed. Two, you need to make sure you like the video. And the third thing I'm going to ask you to do is share one of my videos doesn't have to be this video, you can share any video you want to from my channel, but make sure wherever you share it, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, wherever it might be, make sure you tag me in it because otherwise I won't know you've shared it. And then somebody who does all those things, we will pick them at random and I will send you this camera because you know what, it could be really good to film a little bit of behind the scenes stuff for your video or perhaps a little office, a webcam, something like that. It could work really well. Hope you guys enjoyed this little comparison video. One of those things which I thought would be good fun. If you're interested in finding out more about the camera, I'm going to link it in the description below where you can go get it on Amazon. It is the cheapest action camera available on Amazon right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do hit that like button. It helps me out loads on my channel. I really, really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, why don't you think about it? Hit that subscribe button. Loads of other videos coming on my channel. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you. I will see you on the next video.